Hey there everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today we're going to be talking about a really important concept in statistics, which is how to use the median position formula. So finding the median I think is something that is pretty easy when it's with a small data set, you know, like they teach you that maybe elementary school, middle school. So that's where this is totally easy. But when it comes to really large sets of data, you know, like 300 items in that set of data, that's where it's very difficult to calculate the median if you don't know the median position formula and how to work with it. So that's why we are here today, guys, to discuss how to use that. So without further ado, let's jump into today's video. All right, so let's just review how to calculate the median with a small set of data as we probably have learned. So let's look at the top set right here. So we can see that there are one, two, three, four, five terms in this set. So all that we got to do, given that they are already in chronological order, is just cross out one number on each side until we reach the middle value. So the median for this data set is eight. For the one below that, we can see that we have added in a term here, 12. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six terms. So this is an even number of terms. So we're going to go ahead and cross out numbers on both sides, but we can see that we're left with two in the middle. So what we want to do here is take the average of these two. So eight plus nine over two is going to give us 8.5 as the median. But what happens if we don't have five or six data points? Like what if in this case we have 300 at two different schools, so we have 600 data points. Or in this case, we're going to have 21 or here 29 or here 26. We don't want to go ahead and start rewriting, you know, potentially 600 data points and crossing out on each side. I mean, we don't have all day here. Obviously, this is a timed exam. So this is where we are going to bring in the median position formula. So as you can see, use those little uh, star emojis that everybody uses for emphasis nowadays. All right, so the median position formula basically tells us at what position the median is going to fall. So for example, what we need to do, let's talk about this first data set right here. So n is the number of values in the data set. So as we said, there are one, two, three, four, five values in this data set. So n here is going to be equal to five. So we're going to go ahead and plug in five plus one over two, which gives us six over two, which tells us that the median falls at position three. So we got to be really careful here. It's not that they're telling us that the median is three. They're telling us that it falls at position three. So position three, we can see is eight. And then when we look at this other data set we were working with, there are one, two, three, four, five, six values here. So let's go ahead and plug that in here. N is equal to six. We get six plus one over two, which is equal to seven over two which gives us position 3.5. So position 3.5, what the heck does that mean? So the point 0.5 here tells us that we have to look at position 3 and position 4 and take their average. So we can look over here. We see that position 3 is 8, position 4 is 9. So when we take their average again, that gave us 8.5. So that would be the median here. So of course, as we said, obviously, with it, when it's a smaller data set like this, you don't need to do this, but I'm just showing you guys how it's done so we can actually look at the larger data sets and then how to deal with this right after. So let's first look at how to deal with this with a table and then we'll head over to the graphs. So we know, as we said before, that there are 600 students who were surveyed 300 at the two different schools. So let's just go ahead and sum up how many um, students had each respective number of siblings. So 120, 140, that would be 260 kids had no siblings. 110 and 80 would be 190 kids had one. 90 kids had two. 40 kids had three. And 20 kids had four. Okay, so what that means then, what we want to do is figure out the cumulative total at each respective point. So what that means then is that zero students, we are zero siblings. We have 260 students at that point. 
When we get to one sibling, we end up having 260 plus 190, which gives us we've already occupied 450 of the students. Then when we get to two siblings, let's add 90 to that, we've occupied 540 students, and then we have occupied 580, and then all 600 once we get to four siblings. Okay, so let's then use the median position formula to see at what position the median falls. So here n is equal to 600. So 600 plus one over two, is equal to 601 over 2, which is going to give us 300.5. So that means that we want to see what the value is at position 300 and then position 301. But we know that both of the 300 and 301 positions will fall at this value right here, which is one sibling, because it's not going to be at 260. It's got to be between 260 and 450, which puts it at one sibling. So we know then that if the 300th position is one sibling and the 301st position is also one sibling, their average is obviously going to just be one sibling, which gives us choice B. All right, so let's go ahead and do the same thing for question 22. So we need a total column. So the states that have 10 electoral votes, that's going to be four. By the time we get to 11, that would be four plus four, so eight total. And then add one, nine total, 10 total, 13 total, 14, 15, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21 would be the total as we go down the line here. So let's then apply the median position formula. So we know that we're talking about 21 different states, so n is equal to 21. 21 plus 1 divided by 2 is going to give us 22 over 2, which is position 11. So we need to find where position 11 is. Well, it's definitely not here. That's only position 4. This is going to be up to position 8, up to position 9, up to position 10. So it's going to fall then in this range right here with 15 electoral votes because this has between positions 11 and 13 right here. So that's going to include position 11. So it has to be 15 electoral votes for the median, which is going to be choice B. All right, so now let's talk about how to do this for graphs. So we know that there are 29 games, so n is equal to 29. So let's go ahead and plug that in. 29 plus 1 over 2 gives us 30 over 2. So the median is going to fall at position 15. So let's go and see where that's going to be. So there are eight positions here. So this is positions basically 1 through 8. And then at two goals scored, there are an additional nine positions. So this is going to be positions nine through 17. So position 15 is going to fall within this range right over here, this nine, which is going to be two goals scored. So the median is going to be two goals. And let's check out the next one while we're here. So we know there are 26 pyramids represented in the histogram. I can't help but think that this looks like a middle finger. I always laugh about this, honestly, because it's like, come on, like they could have picked really any other shape for this, but they really had to pick that guy's suspicious. No, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so let's look at number 13. So we know that there are 26 pyramids. So N is equal to 26. 26 plus one divided by two gives us 27 over two which is 13.5. So we need the average of positions 13 and 14 then. So let's go ahead and see. So there are two positions here. Then there are three here. So we've already used five positions. And then there are an additional 12 here. So that means that this one is going to be where we're going to find both positions 13 and 14 because this one's going to have positions, let's see, six through... 17. So 13 and 14 are both going to be included then in this set. So it's got to then be something between 45 and 60. The only choice provided that would fall within that range is got to be choice B, 48 meters. Thanks so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed, make sure to thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and also show me some love in the comments, guys. Working really hard on these videos for all of you 
Also make sure to follow me on TikTok, Test Prep Tips. And just as a reminder, in case anyone is looking for extra prep from us, we do have an SAT math workbook called No BS SAT Math. I know, great name. Um, that's linked in the bio as well as our upcoming SAT crash courses. You can also access that in the bio. So yeah, guys, hope you enjoyed. Thanks so much. Take care.